So we talked about texture. Mm. We talked about the differences. We mm-hmm. talked about the ingredients. Mm-hmm. Gloria, hi. You had to submit your skin to any of these. Which one would you choose? I think the. Welcome back to the Chemist Confessions podcast. I'm Victoria. And I'm Gloria. And this is a human conversation on all the skincare science we talk about on the daily. And today we are continuing our sulfur series into product. This is our product review of actually four products um, in the sulfur space. Today should be quite fun because the cool thing is they're all quite different. Yeah, we picked a range of products on purpose because I think when it comes to sulfur, how you use can really impact your use experience. As me, a dry skin individual, came to learn through the past few weeks. She didn't have fun. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. So with that, um, we should tell you some of our requirements for mm-hmm. what we selected. Uh, the Really, the main thing is they had to have 10% sulfur. Yeah. Um, so that limited us to actually four products that fall into this category. The first one, which we don't have on hand, but we've done a video on and we will share the link of, is the Ordinary's recent launch, their sulfur powder to cream formula. The next one is the Vichy uh, 10% sulfur. This is called the Norma Dorm SOS. The third, we have K Somerville's Eradicate Acne Treatment. This is quite the cult product. I feel like a lot of people immediately think about this product and this format in particular for sulfur products. Yeah, similar to Mario Badescu, but that one didn't make it because it doesn't have a transparent percentage. And then finally, this is probably the most popular sulfur cream on on Amazon. This is the acne treatment with 10% sulfur by the De La Cruz Lab. Um, This will come in the the cheapest, $10 for 2.6 ounces. The Ordinary comes in second It's a powder, so it's a little bit weird in terms of per ounce, but $10 for their 0.2 ounce. Vichy's comes in at $20 for 20 mils, and then Kate Somerville's is $29 for one ounce. All right, so let's jump right into it. (laughs) The texture. As the dry skin representative here, I can go ahead and say these are all really (laughs) tough for me because sulfur, by design, if you refer back to our previous episode, it's its main mechanism of action is drying. So for me, it's been pretty tough, but I've been using it as a spot treat around my nose because I do tend to get blackheads and sometimes a pimple in this area. Um, All of these come in very different forms of application. The ordinary we demoed in our reel is a powder to cream texture, which I actually wound up really liking because it feels more Nourishing is not the right word, but it just feels more of a gentler experience all around. So I feel the most comfortable using it. I think it's also because it's you're dusting an overcoat and it's simply just powder that it feels like it's simply sitting on top of skin. So I can see why that feels the least offensive. And we'll tell you why as we get into some of these other formulas. Yep. Uh, Vichy is a very classic. It's built like a spot tree it's a very classic drying high absorption lotion this is a very thick formula and with the pair with a thin nozzle it's pretty good for precise application of a cream yeah kate somerville all right so this is what they call typical drying lotion um it is simply a bunch of powders and clays in isopropyl alcohol (laughs) <laughs> so I had a hard time with this. Yeah. So typically in skincare, we use denatured alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, very different. Um, and so that's where you get that characteristic isopropyl alcohol smell. Yes, it really feels like this is meant to spot treat and purge immediately. Mm-hmm. That's Kate Somerville's. And then finally, De La Cruz is also interesting because it's literally a sulfur suspension. So If you guys have not watched our sulfur deep dive yet, we mentioned how sulfur is actually quite a challenging ingredient to work with. A lot of times it doesn't really want to go into anything. So most of the time what they do is like azelaic acid, they simply suspend it in something. So De La Cruz, what they did was they suspended it in propylene glycol, I believe. Is it right? Yeah, propylene glycol. All right, one quirk about this. (laughs) 
So Gloria and I actually tested this in different locations at the time. There are lots of lot differences. So this is something that we had mentioned with azelaic acid mm -hmm. is Gloria's, I think, was fine. Yeah, I think it was a, almost a creamy feel. Um, sulfur is insoluble in water, so in suspension form, you tend to get, you could get some particulates, but mine, but it should be fine enough, like we mentioned in previous episode. The finer it is, the more effective it is. Yeah. So with the product that I got, it was mostly creamy feels, yeah. like didn't feel a lot of sediments physically. Yeah. Well, as for mine, um, you can actually see, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show it here. I don't know if the camera can show it. There's just like a level of graininess, and you can see this is the spot treat of eradicate, but there's just a level of graininess yep. that just feels like you're getting a little bit of an exfoliation action, mm -hmm. and that's not a good thing. It is a spot treat, so again, we don't really expect these to have like the best aesthetic, but this would we would say this is not a good sign. You don't you don't want this. And this is definitely a call out out of all four products. This was the only one that we had any any level of like physical graininess to. All right, so that's texture. You can see very different all around. We should talk about smell. There's there's a lot of it. <laughs> When we first got these products, we kind of joke. We we're like, are we just going to rank them based on the amount of like raw and egg smell? I mean, it kind of worked out that way. In some ways, yeah. Yeah. So the standout is the Kate Somerville product here. Because it's an isopropyl alcohol. It, Waft it. Yeah. It, it basically just smells like a lot of alcohol on application, which was really painful for me because using it by your nose is very strong. And then it also has a lot of other ingredients in this such as camper and everything else so then i think the sulfur itself isn't that smelly mm -hmm. but then the camper smell plus the alcohol is very much i call i told the vapor rub yeah. yeah if you put your instant wakey wakey you don't need coffee <laughs> after that yeah yeah for sure so that's eradicate um the other strong smell offender is actually de la cruz Ugh. so <laughs> strongest smell of sulfur so if you do not like the smell this probably is not gonna work out for you um yeah i mean it's literally two ingredients so we're not expecting much on that front yeah the ordinary and vichy both have a pretty mild smell i will say vichy has a masking fragrance over it which sometimes feels a little like you're trying to put a blanket over something you can't cover. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You can too obvious. Yeah, there's definitely still like sulfur wanting to escape from the bottom of it. It's not a homogenized cover up. You know, it's not well blended, but it does make the whole use experience a little better. It's not like a very offensive fragrance plus sulfur. It's like decently done. Yeah, I think uh, if you like don't really don't want to smell sulfur i would say probably vichy would mm -hmm. even be better than the ordinary the ordinary you do still get a hint of that sulfur mm -hmm. smell but it's definitely significantly less compared to the de la cruz so yeah so those are some notes on smells which i think is a big factor when purchasing in this arena all right so that leads us to some chemist notes because there are some formulation things to keep in mind with all of these like gloria mentioned most of these, except for De La Cruz, is going to come with some level of oil absorption powders. We'll start with the Ordinary. So the Ordinary actually contains uh, cowling clay. It does have glycerin and niacinamide. Mm -hmm. So it also contains silica silylate, which is aerogel. Uh, if you don't know what aerogel is, it's, it's a material that ended up in cosmetics um, really from... I want to say like engineering yeah. For space. Yeah, it was like the thing when I first when we first got into college up there with like buckyball as like the next material science yes. great. And then they're like, we don't know what to do with this. Cosmetics, cosmetics. <laughs> yeah. And the characteristic of silica silylate is that it's a great oil absorber. So that's it makes sense that it ended up here. So. The second thing we should talk about is Vichy. It's an emulsion, so in this lotion it contains niacinamide. Uh, I think Gloria would really dislike this, but as a third ingredient, it contains cornstarch. 
Okay, I, I should say that this is just not my favorite category of products. She doesn't have acne. <laughs> yeah, so I'm obviously not the demographic. I'm yeah. just trying to be objective here. Um, yeah. There are a lot of oil-absorbing powders out there. I think for me, Aerogel is up there with the most drying, uncomfortable type of powder I can put on my face. But obviously with these things, concentration also matters. So I didn't end up finding the Ordinary's um, drying, drying nature to be that bad. Mm. Cornstarch is not the worst in terms of skin drying, but it is not the best in terms of texture. Mm. It can feel a little gross, a little gunky. So I don't mind the Vichy texture as a whole, but this is not something I will want to use like two days in a row or something. I will layer things over because that cornstarch is just going to make everything feel a little gross over time. I think what is also notable about Vichy is that it also contains glycolic acid. Um, it also has magnesium aluminum silicate, which is actually also another oil absorbing powder. And then after phenoxyethanol, uh, it has phenyl ethyl resorcinol. And that's it. Those are some of the notable ingredients. But the reason why I want to point out Vichy's is because in the last episode, we were talking about how sulfur data is kind of weird, as in there's not a lot to share, mm -hmm. even though it's an OTC ingredient. Mm -hmm. But product-wise, it's actually kind of interesting because uh, while 10% sulfur is in all of these formulas, each of them kind of come with certain ingredients that really help to aid in oil absorption. Mm -hmm. uh, Vichy's has glycolic acid uh, and niacinamide. So there's other actives in the formula that kind of, I think, aid the, the efficacy itself. And probably will give reason to why some of these are like cult favorite products. Uh, which, of course, then we have to talk about Kate Somerville. It straight up just paired two classic acne OTC actives together. It has the 10% sulfur, but then it also has cell acid. Mm. I think, honestly, if you are looking for a spot tree that's a little aggressive and works fast, mm. I blast that sucker. Eradicate. I can understand why it's a cult favorite. Um, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. Yeah. Its main other supporting oil absorbing powder is magnesium lumen silicate, which I think is also in the Vichy at a lower level. Mm -hmm. Also a classic in acne drying powder. Um, that plus the isopropyl alcohol. If you want to nuke it, do it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I also think like for anyone that just like pop their pimple this would not be what i put on it yeah i think that will uh, yes that hurt that's like a bit that's a good 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 point and um i got i think for me because of this like very signature pink look when i well, a lot of my friends used to use this and you can always tell when they're like my friends with combination skin mm -hmm. or friends with dry patches or like victoria mentioned compromised skin skin barrier that's been damaged through popping and whatnot you can always see once it dry it has like a layer of like sad skin yes. right underneath it yeah so i would say really good but for that fresh fresh pimple that has not been touched yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then finally de la cruz there's not much to say like we said um it's a suspension propylene glycol and that's it no other additional actives there to note the formula is really simple, but I will say my beef with this product actually comes from some of the instructions that's given. Mm -hmm. This one um, on the label, it says antibacterial and anti-inflammatory. And then this says clears and helps prevent acne. That coupled with this much, much bigger like nozzle, I can see a lot of people getting it thinking that it should be an all over face, like moisturizer almost, something you should use daily mm -hmm. just based on the form and the description. But like, a, like we mentioned in the previous episode, there's not really any data showing sulfur as a long-term preventative type yes. of ingredient. And it's not... It's just not fun. It smells like crap. You don't Why have would to it smell like sulfur every day is yes. what we're saying. Yes. So use it. Please use this more as a spot treat. That would be our recommendation. Don't use it as a preventative measure. There's plenty of other ingredients out there. Um, and if that's interesting to you in terms of acne preventatives, let us know. All right. So with that, so we talked about texture. Mm. We talked about the differences. We mm -hmm. talked about the ingredients. Mm -hmm. 
Gloria, hi. You had to submit your skin to any of these. Which one would you choose? Well, I think the answer is pretty straightforward. It's the one that's least drying to me. That I feel like also what's important is stays in the spot I put it on. Since transferring drying out other patches of skin is highly undesirable to me. I am in between the ordinary and the Vichy. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> the ordinary, it's a pretty unique texture. It's an easy application experience. And it does stay put because it has that level of tack associated with mm-hmm. it. I don't find it to be that drying, but because of the the aerogel, I'm a little nervous about using it any longer than like a day or two. Um, Vichy is formulated like a true cream. So all, on my dry skin, it is by far the most comfortable uh, in terms of wear. Obviously, I still wouldn't use it long term or anything like that. But from my experience, this was not offensive. Pretty easy to use, too. Yeah, totally. And I think the only thing to note about these two is they both have niacinamide, yeah. um, which we know for some of our viewers, we've all overdone it. So something to kind of keep track of there. But otherwise, that is a review of the sulfur landscape. If you guys have other sulfur products that you think we've missed, please let us know. If there's other topicals that you think you want us to explore, also let us know. But otherwise, we are about to basically review like 10 to 12 uh, barrier creams next, which is very exciting. So with that, uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next time.